Hi there. It has been about three and a bit months since we left New Zealand and embarked on our journey of parenting passports and profits. And I thought it would be a good time to check in and give an update of how this journey is going. Uh, we left New Zealand in February, back in the February. It's now the beginning of June. We first went to Singapore and uh, a couple of days in Auckland and off to Singapore and to stay with Ellie's sister and brother-in-law. Then we had a week in Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur before deciding that we were going to head to Penang with a view to staying there and that's exactly how it's turned out. We've been in Penang for nearly three months. Yeah, we call it home. We've got an apartment which we've signed up for a year and we are currently in Hat Yai. I'm recording this from a little eco village called uh, Chestnut Eco Village across the border into Thailand where we've had to come for a long weekend just to take care of a visa run out of Malaysia. So far so good. Uh, so I wanted to delve into uh, a little bit about parenting, a little bit about passport, a little bit about profits, three months, nearly three months and a bit into our journey and you can uh, take from it what you will. A little disclaimer though, for those of you who don't know me, I tend to see the world in the bigger picture and through optimistic and positive eyes. So I'm always looking to put a positive spin on my life, however great the challenge is. So the disclaimer is that this isn't for everyone and you can stop watching now if you're looking for uh, everything to be fantastic because life is a digital nomad and that's just a label of what we're doing uh, but it's real you know we wake up every day we still got to eat we've got to drink and we've got to take care of each other ourselves and our little child little miss three is three and a half now and we're all real people uh, living every day and, but it's not a life for everyone and the digital nomad bit, a bit is just an, a label we picked up uh, like others have picked up. It really means location independent and that's the bit that attracted Ellie and I. We were not happy where we were in New Zealand and I will elaborate on that a little bit a bit further on. Uh, there were circumstances and we just decided to take control and, and start all over again. And the digital nomad location independent life is something that we like the sound of. It fits with us. We wanted, we like traveling. We hadn't done any traveling together as a family. We wanted to correct that. And we like the idea of being the best parents we can be. We've always felt strongly about that from uh, even before Ayla was born. And finally, we needed to fund how we were doing it, and we got in a position that funding was a challenge. So, so let me, that, that's the disclaimer to say that uh, what we chose to do is not for everyone. This is not an easy life. People like us tend to put a positive spin on it because what's wrong with kind of being in a place like this and not appreciating it? But it doesn't mean every day is filled with... Uh, everything going smoothly anything but and we're working really hard without a lot of reward and that's a choice we make and and some people won't be comfortable with that I've always been comfortable with delayed gratification and probably too long a, a delayed gratification it it doesn't it hasn't always worked out for me so putting off till tomorrow uh, what you could have today I maybe have been too guilty of that. And we're living a bit of that now. We're looking to see if we can find a way to create passive income in the future so that life can be uh, like this all the time once we get older and don't want to work at all. And we're putting in work today to try and make that happen. We've got no guarantees that's going to happen, and but it's just the, the choices we've made. So Anyway, let me get on with parenting, passports and profits and you can judge for yourself how we're doing uh, and whether it's something you'd like to do. The parenting part is definitely the bit I'd say is our biggest win from a bigger picture point of view because I think bigger picture. We had got into a situation in New Zealand that we were not seeing as much as Ayla 
as we wanted to. We always had an ambition to home educate her and we tried to have as much mummy or daddy time with her when she was first born but with the nature of our business uh, choices back when she was born, she's three and a half as I say, they slowly started going wrong and we, we needed to fix that as soon as possible but we didn't realise that at the time and our quality time with each other and with Ayla was just, just diminishing. So Now I have two full days a week with Ayla on my own and Ellie has three and then we have the weekends as family time. And some days are definitely challenging, you know, daddy-daughter days aren't always great but the majority of the time I just love being in the space with her and the more present I am for just me and her that is when we have our best days. If I've got an agenda to be doing a task list or whatever, it can get challenging. The more I can come down to her pace, her height, and being just present for, for whatever we're doing, the better the day is. So we do a lot of reading, we do a lot of playing in the playground, we have a swimming pool in our apartment which makes it really nice and easy to, to drop downstairs and go and cool off and, and and swim and swimming is probably one of the biggest excitement parts about our parenting. Ayla was born in the water and has always been comfortable in the water but it wasn't exactly developing really fast or anything even though we've been putting her in swimming lessons the whole time. She can now swim. She's three and a half and she can swim. She can't swim technically brilliant but she can swim to the point that daddy and mummy are actually could could would feel safe if she fell in the water, we'd have a few more minutes than we would have had before. Um, that's always been a little nightmare of mine that, you know, she did fall in. And I've had bad dreams and I'd see things of her drowning and I don't know where that comes from or anything. Uh, but uh, we still not... Uh, obviously, we're not saying we're going to turn our back on her. All we're saying is our confidence levels that if she did fall into water... She has a bit of a chance now. She knows how to propel herself. She knows how to stay afloat. Not for very long, but long enough just to buy us that extra bit of time. But forgetting that, it's just fun in the water. She dives and she goes between our legs and we can splash around and do things. And there's kids much twice as old as her who can't swim. And it's kind of funny watching them interact with her who's being thrown up in the air and splashing around. That's just one example of having some quality time putting her in the water every day, just being with her, spending more time, something that she, she could do. She reads vociferously, she, she talks a lot, and she can read books back verbatim sometimes. She's now got so complacent that she reads too fast for anyone to actually understand what she's talking about, because her, her mouth can't go as fast as her brain's going. Um, and she's even been along to her first Mandarin class, and she didn't integrate too well with the Mandarin and the Malaysian children but it's because she just seemed so confident of her own space and she sat there with her own little book and 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 didn't didn't kick up a fuss but was just kind of saying oh, I'll come when I'm ready and so I don't know where that confidence comes from but it's it's there and and when we get back from our trip to Thailand, the new term for doing Mandarin classes starts. We're going to look to put her into that class and just see how she gets on. We're not trying to uh, make her learn a language. We're very uh, very much led by it should be play-based and we found a play-based environment. So we're only doing it because it seems in keeping with the, the play-based thing. Uh, but all in all, from a parenting point, we are getting... We feel we're making, we're enjoying our parenting journey. We weren't before. There's too many stresses and strains. Um, the downside is that Ellie and I have had less one-to-one -one time, and that you know that that puts a strain on the relationship. And we're conscious of that, so we're trying to find ways to do about that. We we, we can change that. Probably we're just we're just getting more. We're just getting to know people so that we feel comfortable there we could use them as babysitters for Ayla. But that's our choice, and, and some people may have let go of that earlier, and some people may have taken longer. It doesn't really matter. We're aware of it. We need to do something about it. 
Um, I'm not saying that this three months has been a perfect parenting journey, anything from it. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that I've lost my temper from time to time, and that still happens. It now seems to be more situational, you know, a, a bad day, a tired day, or whatever, and, and maybe some behaviour that we're not happy with. And, 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 you know, she's going through a little phase at the moment where she's pooing her pants when she's perfectly capable of going to the toilet, and that's causing us frustration. And we're trying to find out if there's a reason for that or if she's just going through a phase. And uh, so th those are challenges we know all parents face. There's nothing unique about what, what we're doing. We're just in a different environment, but there's nothing unique about that. So, uh, so, just, so once again, parenting's been the highlight. There's been lots more wins, but I'm not saying it's perfect. So, and that wouldn't matter where we were in, in the world. So it doesn't matter what country we're in. Uh, whether we're travelling or not, we'd be failing. Um, we'd be finding those challenges. Just overall, is our parenting journey better than it was before we left on this digital nomad journey? And I would say vertical is yes, and we are excited and feeling more energised. We're trying, you know, we're trying to get over burnout of the last three years, and the symptoms and the uh, for that don't, don't disappear overnight. So energy levels are steadily coming back, health and fitness is getting better, and parenting is a win. So let me move on. Passports. That's just our way of saying uh, we wanted to live in different environments and experience different in environments. And you can do that in your home country. You don't have to travel to do that. We discovered a Facebook group called World Schooling, which was about home educating around the world. We discovered that and just fell in love with the group and it is, it, it, it's enlightened us to what's possible, what can be done, the way people are parenting, the way they're travelling with different uh, age children and, and, and not just one child, you know, some of them got five, six and seven. It's, it's just unbelievable what, what some people are willing to do. Excuse me, getting dis distracted as a butterfly flying across. Uh, but that opened up our eyes that we could travel, we could home educate, and we could make money on the road. And so, from a passport's point of view, it isn't about actually traveling from country to country, but it's wherever you are, are you making the most of it? And we wasn't even making the most of where we were back in New Zealand. I'm originally from England. I wanted to ski more is the main reason I moved to New Zealand. And in the first few years, that's exactly what I was doing. But in the latter years, um, for, for a variety of reasons, we weren't enjoying the quality of life we aspired to. And so even though we didn't foresee going on a digital nomad journey, the fact that we both love to travel was a no-brainer, and we just packed our bags, became minimalists. We are living with two backpacks, hardly any possessions, and that is the best thing. As I say, we would not have planned for this, but now we have virtually nothing, it is, I can only judge on how we feel. Uh, we don't have to do maintenance tasks. Uh, we don't have a car anymore, so we don't, have to, we don't have to put petrol in. We don't have to go for warrant fitnesses. We don't have to do repair jobs. We don't have yard jobs. We don't, we don't even own an iron anymore. This t-shirt probably looks okay, but we hardly have to get dressed up. And this may sound trivial, and it may not be for everyone, but the point is, every minute of those tasks or jobs, if they weren't things you enjoyed doing, they were just minutes you weren't having with each other or enjoying leisure moments, and that was where we were at. We'd walk up our driveway, and we would see jobs. That's all I would see is jobs as I walked up my driveway, and jobs that I wasn't willing or able to do. And so that just added to the, yeah, you know. Whereas now, every minute that we're not doing that is a minute we have with, you, with each other. It's a minute to uh, embrace each other, a minute to parent more, a minute to go out and try something in the local environment, to, to, to walk, to hike, to go and test something out. And that's all we're doing. We, we're just doing as much as we can with the resources we have at the time, um, but our time's not being sucked up in chores, and that, for that we are very, very grateful. So, verdict on the passport inside, uh, we've been able to squeeze in Singapore, we've chosen to live in Malaysia or Penang particularly, not, not Malaysia, Penang particularly, partly because we found a really good workspace and we knew it would be family friendly. And verdict on that is 
uh, I'd say another it's another win. Uh, I'm finding the heat okay. I was expecting Asia to be barely unbearable, but it hasn't been like that. And around the home, because we've got the pool, we can cool off uh, pretty easy. So, verdict on on the tr passports aspect, and knowing that we're in a place that we can get to other parts of Asia really easily when when resources allow, that feels feels good. And this trip over the border was done by land in a few hours. We had to do it because we had to leave Mal Malaysia because you're only given a 90-day visa. And, of course, that's an element of risk. You know, we have a year's apartment signed up. In theory, we might not get back in the country for long enough to enjoy that. We would have to go at least three times, but if they only give us seven days or 30 days, we'd have to leave even more. So that's a risk, and that won't be for everyone. But there are other ways you could have come in here with a work visa and be allowed to stay longer. So it's just our circumstances. We're here in holiday visa and we're choosing it like this. And so we do have to travel. But um, Asia is pretty easy to get around and we like the idea of seeing more of Asia. So from a passport thing, the fact we're embracing the Asian culture, we're, we're slowly making friends with people around the accommodation we're choosing to integrate in Malaysian and Mandarin and Chinese environments wherever we can and we're thoroughly enjoying the culture and it's you know watching Ayla try different languages even if it's, even if it's only just hello goodbye please thank you etc it's all, it's all good fun so, so far so good so, uh, so profits I try and keep this video as short as I can it'll probably be 20-25 minutes the profits. This, for those who have been following, is a, our biggest challenge. We had a business not go well for us back in New Zealand. We we invested heavily. We didn't get a return on that investment. We lost a lot, and we felt like we had to start all over again. Um, I thought when the business we had was took us into e-commerce. But it, it required a lot of logistics, and we invested in getting those logistics because we were trying to make the business scalable. Previously, we traded time for money through coaching and mentoring and knowledge-based things, and we always knew that wasn't scalable, and we were always trying to get out of that. The business of uh, the e-commerce was in organic fruit and vegetables, and whilst we loved the product and uh, we were quite proud of the fact we did make it scalable, we made the mistake of there wasn't enough customers to pay for the scale and we shouldn't have done it how we did it. And that's my fault, you know, that's the optimist in me. I didn't pay enough attention to the, we didn't do, we didn't time it right. We gambled rather than invested and it backfired on us. But what we did learn was that we could make money online and we thought, well, that fits in with the digital nomad life that we could see as possible. We've uh, developed some skills in that area. If we carry on developing skills in that area, then maybe we can make this work for us. And I foresee if we t took hold of uh, Ellie's business, the health and fitness business, she's already written a book and had a lot more, shall we say, uh, online material available than perhaps I did. And we thought we could monetize that easier so I volunteered to work for Ellie and do all the things that she uh, couldn't or what well, she could do but she, she well, it wasn't her passion but was more in keeping with my passion and we'll start to build those back-end systems start working on sales funnels sales tools all those things we put off and uh, making our you know, working on search engine optimization and and specifically monetization of the platform um, and that's been an upward learning curve for me. But I felt it would take me two to three months to build the platform and the building block to make Ellie's website um, pretend it would have the foundations to make money. And as it's turned out, it's been about right. We had a lot of things we needed to change and I needed to learn some things fast and, and implement those. But three months on, we are now a .com, we're on a secure website, we're on an international host website, we've learned a lot of things, we use. We don't write anything anymore that, unless it's been key, key worded, we have the skills to make sure that what we're writing is being looked for. Now that's not, that's not a guarantee, but you 
you just got to put work in to, to try and make that happen and then let Google do it do its stuff uh, we have we've got AdWords working which means you know uh, there's ads on our site and if people click on those we, we make a few bucks these are tiny little things and the only way they, they work to, to, to support you is they need a lot more traffic um, but traffic takes time uh, we've got affiliate products on the site now that are in keeping with what Ellie does so it's not strategic you know so Ellie writes about health the health and fitness industry and the well-being industry so where we found products that fitted in with our philosophies we've started to add them into contextual writing so if she writes about a food product that we eat and we will we'll, we'll, and we can find an affiliate arrangement we've, we've we found those things if we can find physical products like so she does yoga she might find physical products we've built we're starting to build affiliate links in so so there are all ways you can monetize the site and our job is to write more strategically so that people who are looking for those things find our articles and over time more and more people click on those and make money and then uh, we can develop courses that, that, that go with that the upshot of that is that uh, the affiliate marketing, the passive stuff, it, it takes time and Google, you know, it's got a very complex algorithm. No one knows exactly how it works and you're just doing your best to stay ahead of that algorithm and that's, that, that, that's where we're at. So we've realised that we, it's probably not going to give us the money quick enough. Uh, we've got sales funnels so people can sign up for our newsletter and the way they... The way they interact with that newsletter gives us indications of what they're interested in and then we can put them into different newsletters that are targeted to, to where they're at. So, um, yeah, depending on their, 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 their demographic and what they're into, they'll, they'll click on different things in, in Ellie's newsletters. And it's all automated. So, as I said, it, it would take about two to three months to build the foundations and then the repeat automation can kick in and that is where we're at. The, what we've realised two to three months on is that the, uh, the monetization, the passive income of those automations won't kick in big enough and quick enough to make that happen for us to live on. So we'll, we will need to go back to trading some time for money. So Ellie's really enjoying writing. She doesn't want to do personal training, but she does want to do writing. So she's looking. She's actively looking for freelance writing gigs. And as my setup time on Ellie's site starts to diminish, I will support her in um, pitching for other gigs and also look to build the website around parenting passports and profits which doesn't current exist and look to freelance some of my skills whether they be my old business coaching skills or whether there be some of the technical skills that I've acquired in setting up the back end of Welly's Ellie's site uh, remains to be seen so we so we so from a profits point of view the verdict is we've made a start we can't live off what we're earning, so I'm, that's my another disclaimer. This isn't easy. You've got to have something behind you to support yourself, or you already need the revenue, the remote revenue um, uh, mechanisms in place. So if you were already freelancing, if you were already making passive income, then trotting off on a, a, a parent a travelling journey will be a lot easier. We didn't have those. We're we're entirely reliant on savings we've made and living off of our future you know so if we don't if we don't start paying our own way from what we earn we, we, we're just making the quality of our future life a, a lot more challenging and that can only last a little bit longer so we we can't carry on like this indefinitely so we're we feel like three months in the foundations have been laid this could work but we can't wait for it to work so we kind of got to go back to um, back to work, you know, having someone pay us for our time while the other things uh, kick on. So, neutral ter territory on verdict. Excited enough uh, that we're going to continue on this path, um, but having to make sure that we look after ourselves and, and, and don't remain in negative cash flow much longer. So, 
So sorry uh, if this video took a bit too long, but overall I wanted to summarise parenting passports and profits and just shoot from the hip and let you know where we're at and so you can think about it from, from your own point of view. Uh, the, we, 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 parenting is the most important thing that, 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 that why we're on this journey. We want to be present for Ayla as much as we possibly can, travel as a bonus and money's just yeah, how do we make sure we earn enough that we, we can maintain a quality of life until we die. So we're not, it's not all about today. Uh, we've got to make sure that we can look after ourselves for the future. And those things apply wherever you are in the world. So it's just a balancing act about how do you, how do you stay present for the parenting journey in the moment. Uh, how do you enjoy the world as best you can and how do you pay for that and make sure you can continue to put a roof over your head and have things to look forward to in the future. And I know you all have exactly the same challenges wherever you are, whatever you're doing. And uh, this is just our journey so far. I'll be back in um, for short videos from week to week and I've no doubt I will summarize like this every 90 days or so. These, these visa runs will forced us into a bit of solitude. So, so the girls are expecting me to join them for lunch and I'm going to go back and enjoy our final afternoon in the Eco Village. It was nice talking to you. Thank you for staying with me for nearly half an hour and until next time I wish you well wherever you are. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Please ask questions about anything, anything about parenting, about our travels or about the tools we're using to to fund uh, to hopefully fund this um, uh, or, or how we how we're using tools to to, to take care of business. Uh, I'm keen to interact with you on any of those things and uh, make the journey uh, make the community stronger and uh, make the journey more enjoyable by meeting like minds. So it was great talking to you. Bye bye for now. Take care now.